everybody, and welcome to NBC's 10 Count. I am Steve Fall. On today's episode, oh, it's very special because I got Buff Bagwell with me. Buff, how you doing today? Good, brother. What's going on? Oh my God! Oh, I was gonna say. I was gonna say. My, a quick story. I had a backyard wrestling federation. I think like every other kid did during the Monday Night Wars. And I had a friend. He's like, I want to be Buff Bagwell in the backyard. And I was like, the only way you can be Buff Bagwell is if you do his strut. Right, and I forced strut. my friend Ben, shout out to Ben, to do the strut and the pose, and he got it. And I was like, you can be Buff Bagwell in the backyard <laughs> wrestling <laughs> federation. The Steiner Brothers and Undertaker, uh, Vader, all going into the Hall of Fame of the WWE. If the WWE ended up calling Buff Bagwell, would you accept the nomination to go into the Hall of Fame? Absolutely. I don't, I, I don't, I did, I disagreed with the idea of going in with the NWO. I, that's like Brett Favre um, having all the Green Bay Packers go into his, you know, MVP award. Mm-hmm. It just don't make sense to me. Um, I mean, it makes sense to me that Hulk Hogan, Kevin Nash, and Scott Hall maybe would go in under the NWO. But even with even maybe even X Pac because they were that was kind of their boy. Right, he was over. Um, but the rest of us, dude, all we do is go out and do their stuff for live, too sweet. You know, you know, um, you know. NWO stuff and all that stuff. That was that was the stuff Kevin and Scott thought of. You know, we just did it to to be cool along with Kevin and Scott that invented it. So I'm not going to go in under a team right. for a, for a Hall of Fame ring, um, but for a Buff Bagwell ring for my career being a the only. And let me say it. If I beg every time on a podcast, I beg somebody, I go, I'm not saying I'm right, but please feel free to contact me and let me know if I'm wrong. And I haven't been, been proved wrong yet. And that is, I don't know anybody that has six world tag team titles with five different partners. And everybody says five tag team championships, but it's six and I can name them all. And it's with five different partners. And there's nobody that has that. That's a pretty good re- award, bro. Yes, I. There are people. Who, there are people in the Hall of Fame currently that some people are like, "I'm sorry, what?" But I think Buff Bagwell being nominated and put in would be great. But you did mention teams. Now, currently in the world, people are discovering your tag team, the American Males, with Scotty Riggs, and they are discovering your entrance music. Now, WCW has come up with some hits. We had the NWO, of course, you know, Wolfpack, even Paul Orndorff's song when he was uh, Mr. Wonderful. But, but the American males seem to be making a resurgence amongst newer fans. How do you feel about this when someone contacts you who, you know, didn't watch you in the ring, but is like, oh, American males, American males. People are obsessed with this song. What do you the sad part is I know the words to it. <laughs> <laughs> That's not sad. It's beautiful. It's great. And so I actually came out to that for the Game Changers uh, cluster thing by pay per view, and um, and it was it was you know it was cool. I could, I could just tell it was that kind of crowd. Yeah. Because um, a kid before me that was really good in the ring. Uh, I can't remember his name. There's so many new talents now that are all getting popular and getting over, but. This guy came out to, um, we built this city, mm-hmm. we built this city on rock. Mm-hmm. Well, as soon as I heard that and saw the whole crowd singing, and I said, I'm coming out to the American Bell song. Yeah. So I go straight to their, their head guy that calls that, those plays, those decisions, and I said, dude, I think I should come out to my American Bell song. He goes, oh, my God. He goes, is, is Riggs anywhere close? I said, I've got no idea. I said, yeah. I don't He's anywhere in sight, or I know he's not here. Mm-hmm. He goes, God, I wish we could have got him here, but he goes, maybe he goes, even, even right there, he goes, maybe next year, 12 months away. I'm like, whoa, I said, May- maybe, you know, I, all right, but let's, I said, tonight, let's give it a go. Yeah. So we did the American Mail song, and I did the, the whole clap, you know, and everything, and, and, it, and it worked. It was cool, people. And I waited, I waited for them to, because it starts off like, Ring, ring. 
da 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 you know, like that. Yeah. And I waited for them to realize what it was, and then they, I heard the crowd like, oh, and right when it kind of caught on to it, that's when I came out, you know. Oh, man. It worked, you know, it was pretty cool. So I think it's great. I, yep. think, I think it was a great video. I thought it was a great deal. I came up with the whole idea, but they trusted me with it. Mm -hmm. They didn't have to, but I was trying to convince them that you got to realize in my generation, this goatee was a heel. Mm -hmm. Facial hair meant bad guy. Yep. Um, chokers and earrings meant bad guys. You know, that was a bad guy. That was a heel thing. And I was trying to show them that, you know, having being good looking or being attractive and, and being and having a goatee and a dangly cross earring and a choker with a vest and no shirt on was cool. And very boy band. Exactly. I felt yeah. like it was I felt like that was kind of the generation that was coming. And and then what happened right after the American Males? NWO wearing black and trying to be as bad with beards and long hair and all the bad guys. And what were we? We got over as baby faces. So I really think that generation was just time that the the black we were we tried everything to shove being a bad guy down their throats. Mm. The more we did, the more they loved us. Well, today people are no longer looking at you as a bad guy. They look at you as an American male. American male. They love that song. They love that song so much. Now, currently in the WWE, there are so many superstars. You mentioned it earlier. There are so many wrestlers, superstars across the entire spectrum. But in the WWE, currently, do you have a personal favorite when you tune in to watch? Do you have someone here like, man, that person's got it? I like the kid that goes. AJ Styles? No, he goes down and he get like it. The lights even go up when he does it. It's like he's going. Oh, Finn Balor? Yeah. Yeah, Finn Balor. Yeah, yeah. Wow. And he, did he, he, I remember he lost the U.S. He lost, he lost the, the U.S. Uh, title. To some kid named Theory that's with it. Yeah. I, li I liked him a lot, dude. And I could tell right away, I was like, hey, let me ask you, has Theory been coming out? Is, is it, or is that, was that his first match? Oh, no. He's been involved with Vince McMahon. Vince McMahon on TV has handpicked him as a, like, a, a protege. So when you have Vince McMahon, the boss, hanging out with you on TV, because think about the list of people who Vince has been involved with, Austin, Rock, Taker, Triple H, Triple H and then suddenly here's Theory. It's Im immediately well, the fans I, look I at it as like, boom, stamp of approval. He had way too much swag and way too much confidence to, in other words, I instantly went, I'm watching this match. This, yeah. this, this is, this is going to be. This kid, this kid ain't just, you know, waiting in the ring, you know, for the guy he's wrestling and he came out to no music. This kid's, this kid's throwing hand signals and got selfies. A, he was doing, he was doing it all. He selfie with Vince and, yeah. all. and I went, this kid, this kid's, this kid's somebody, you know, and then sure enough, he, you know, did some kind of crazy ass move that looked incredible off. Like he jumped through hit the second rope yeah, and bounced up and DDT uh, did a backflip. God, so I got a backflip DDT thing, man. And I went, man, that kid can work. Yeah, so, he definitely can. Yeah. It was a, it was a big deal and he was very confident. You could, um, I mean, to be honest with you, when I first watched, when I first saw him, I went, this kid's going to win tonight. He just had a, he had a whole, swag about him that was way too confident i mean for example, for example if he would have lost he would have almost looked stupid he was so confident and I, I know that i wouldn't do that if i was losing so i know that he wouldn't do that if he was losing so i went this kid's doing way too many hand signals <laughs> and stuff and throwing cool things out that i was like if he don't pull this off he's gonna be buried you know kind of not not buried but it was gonna be it wasn't gonna look good Yes, yes. And sure enough, he went over and did all the selfies with Vance and everything. And God dang, brother, I hate to, I mean, I hate to even say this, but it was shocking how bad Vince looked. Wow.
it, it shocked me, bro. I am a, there's nothing on any video out there in the world that's got me dogging out Vincent Mann. Never would, never will. He is a genius that has run the WWF and to the WWE. How can you possibly say anything bad about a billionaire that built the WWF? Uh, you can't, but, but. Not on the show. He looked rough, man, and I hated it. I don't want him to get old because that means I'm getting older. I don't time know. time is our enemy, isn't it? Time is our enemy. Uh, let's talk about WCW, though, because, again, you can watch the entire run of Buff Bagwell on Peacock. It's, it's, it's a great app, but WCW, the company you were working for originally, was purchased by WWE in early 2001. Yeah. Now, the idea online seemed to be that, oh, Mondays will get, say, Nitro, and, like, Thursdays would get WWE. So we're going to have, we're still going to have WCW, but it didn't really happen. Not until July 2nd, 2001, when you and Booker T were booked into a match and pretty much it was, Hey, we're on raw, but we're also going to be presenting a WCW match with WCW ropes and referees and commentary teams. And you're out there with Booker T. The end of the night though, ends up with you being, you know, you and Booker being tossed out of the building. This was even has an article on WWE.com calling it the most awkward match ever. So explain to me why this whole situation looks messy when you see it on TV. Well, go the route of this. This is this is the first thing that I, I, you may know, but I doubt it. And that's do you do you know where that match was taking place? No, but I have I did research on you, and you have mentioned that this match should have been in Atlanta, correct? Yeah, but the reason why is it was seven days later. Okay. So we force-fed a Tacoma, Washington crowd at a WWF show to watch the first match of the invasion when we could have waited seven days and put Buff Bagel and Booker T at the Phillips Arena in Ted Turner's backyard. Mm -hmm. now, which one would you do as Vince McMahon? Well, I would do Atlanta, but at the same time, do you want, do you, I guess as a business, is someone really going, okay, we want this WCW thing to succeed? Or is it saying, let's just put it out there, see what our audience thinks of it. And if they like it, we'll continue on. If they don't like it, we're going to twist it and turn it and make it something different. So right. yeah, so that, that could be yeah, the, that's, the cause, that's, that's I think. A, that's, that's the best answer, comeback of, of that angle I've ever seen. But let me tell you what me and Booker were doing backstage. Okay. We're going, why in the hell, with our mouths covered like this, why in the hell are we wrestling the first match here when Atlanta is next week? Now, and did you know, like, say it go back a week ago, did you know at any point in time this match was happening on this date? Or were you told, say, uh, Sunday. Hey, by the way, get your gear we, we, and come we, come to the we arena. Knew that, we knew that we were at Tacoma. Yeah, and we knew that Atlanta was next week. You know, and then all of a sudden, they come out and tell us we're main event. Okay. And so we start asking each other, why are we? Why are we not waiting until next week for this? Why not wait for the first match of the invasion? The the thing that was never going to happen. These two companies coming together. Let's give it a fair chance and put it in Ted Turner's backyard and shove it in his face if that's what we're doing. And that's kind of the output of what we were doing. We were, we took, he took, Vince took over w, WCW and we were going to shove it in Ted Turner's face. If that's the idea, let's, let's get a WCW crowd to give it a chance and then, then venture out with it. I'm with you on that, but I don't think out of the gate, I mean, dude, Every single person that came out of the curtain got booed. And the right. next time you watch it back, I told somebody this on a podcast I did a couple of days ago. You can go back a year length of time and every single match I did, you saw me talking to the camera every single match I was in. I went to the camera and said something like, I'm looking at me. I'm looking incredible. I'm up. I'm the stylist. Mm -hmm. I do my dance and point to the camera and all that. Watch the Booker match back. And I don't look in the camera once. You know, why, why did you choose not to look at the camera? I didn't choose. My music comes on 
and I go to walk out and a hand stops me and it's Shane. And Shane goes, I forgot to tell you, which is bullshit. I forgot to tell you, but you can't look in the camera. And I go, Shane, have you ever watched one of my matches? And I said, that's all I do. I said, brother, that's all I do. I look in the mat, I look at the camera, I do a pose. Yeah. I do my poses in the camera. I do my strut to the camera. I'm always talking to the camera. That's what I do. That's my gimmick. And he goes, can't do it here. So I'm thrown off my game right off the bat. So I come walking out, and you've never seen me not walk out, do this, go to a knee, and then get up and do the camera, right to the camera. And brother, I'm coming down the ramp going like this. Trying to dodge the camera because I've been told I can't do it. Mm -hmm. So I'm out of my game tremendously. So if you watch it back, you'll see that it's the first match in at least a full year, maybe two, that I didn't look in the camera. And so we were just, we were just, it caught me like, you know, being a heel and like, dogging people out and pointing at people because you got to move, man. You got to be a, you got to move to be a, to be a talent. You, I don't care if it's dogging somebody or, you know, doing a strut, doing a pose, whatever it may be. Movement is the key to success. Mm -hmm. And, you know, stale and paws and holds that, that's, uh, that, that kills everything. So, you know, stone cold comes back to the back. And he tells us what the finish is. He goes, look, uh, during your comeback, Booker, we're going to hit the ring. We're going to jump you. Bagel's going to jump in, help us. Uh, we're going to beat you to the back. We're going to throw you out of the back. Bagel, you're going to act like you were involved. We're going to cut you off and throw you out the back, too. If Stone Cold told you that, what would you do? Well, you say, yes, sir. That's what we did. We said, yes, sir. Well, was that was a test, over. you think? No, it was no? a yes, no. They came to the back and actually it it got kind of ugly a little bit in the back because Booker kind of after think how many times I wrestled Booker T in different tag teams. Mm -hmm. I've wrestled him in every tag team I've been in and I beat him in every tag team I've been in. He's beat me in every tag team I've been in. So that me and Booker always would wrestle. So me and Booker had incredibly great chemistry. That's why we always made our spots together and too cold and Stevie Ray would always do their spots together because Stevie was a little bit clumsy and Booker and, and, uh, and um, uh, too cold was a better worker than me. So he was able to work around some of Stevie Ray's, you know, um, flaws where me and Booker just went out and tore it down and was right with each other the whole way. And yeah reverse the hip tosses and over the ropes and stuff. I mean, we were always just right with each other. So Booker T was not pleased with this outcome yeah, of this it match kinda, either? It kind of turned to that at the end. Like, like I would, like I'd done something wrong. I said, whoa, 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 wait a minute, bro. I said, I, I didn't do nothing wrong. I said, well, let's, let's, let's watch the match back. Every punch I threw looked like I was taking your head off. Mm -hmm. I said, everything we did, I said, the scissor kicks, I was right there. Perfect bump. I said, Every, every boot, every punch, every kick, I said, nothing was wrong with that match. I said, but all, then all of a sudden, Pat Patterson spoke up and Pat said, you guys don't, don't, y'all guys should not get an argument because this is our fault. And we were like, what? And he goes, I do the main events for WWF, because that's what we were at the time. WWF. Yep. He said, I do the main events for WWF. He says, but Johnny was taking care of the 12 guys that we hired for WCW. And because that's what they did, they hired 12. Yeah. And um, so Johnny thought Pat had done the finish and Pat had thought Johnny done the finish. Wow. Where really, we just had heard from Stone Cold what to do. And like I said, we did what Stone Cold said so. <laughs> so we did what Stone Cold said. And really, nobody of authority we didn't really ever for the first time in my life we never went to the finish room you know we didn't sit down with a promoter or a booker and go 
here's what I want you guys to do. I want you to do this, this, and we want to paint this kind of picture. And that none of that was talked to up with us. So we went out and just did a WCW style match. And supposedly that's why, you know, it was a bad match. And that's why we, you know, I got fired. That's a bunch of bull crap. Okay. And it's just, you know, A, it wasn't a bad match. Even if it was a decent match, do you fire Buff Bagel over having a decent match after 11 years of having great matches and great tag teams? And Well, let I guess let the viewers decide. Uh, July 2nd, 2001 episode of Raw, it's the main event. Buff Bagwell, Booker T, you can watch that. But 2013, they did vote the most awkward match ever, which is a very bizarre award. But let's move on. I got yeah. two more questions. One question, I just want a simple yes or no, and you can you know add a little bit to it, a little bit. People say you don't run your Twitter account. Yeah, uh, that's not true. Okay. Yeah. Very good. Because everyone is on Twitter is 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 convinced they're detectives. Like I get the magnifying glass out, like, oh yeah. yes, Buff Bagwell, he does not run his Twitter account. Yeah. I, I don't even get I don't understand. I don't understand. They actually came up with I got Dallas Page to run it. Like Dallas Page has time. Mm-mm. To run my Twitter account. He does not. He does, I interviewed exactly. him and he does not have time. I'm at the DDP, anything. I'm at the DDPY crib right now. Guys don't have time to do that. No. He thinks it's cool. Like other I had I had the fight with Strowman. Yes. You know, even Dallas goes, <clears throat> Yeah, I know we have some guys help us and stuff. I know you're doing a, most of your stuff, if not all. He said, but I knew you said this. And he was talking about <laughs> part of the Stroman thing yeah. and Stroman ends up apologizing to me, you know, which I thought Twitter was, loves Buff Bagwell. Uncle Buff, baby. Uncle Dude, Buff. They, they love you. You know, and you, there's, stay, there's you stand up for trans rights. You're on Twitter nailing people with, with crap they're thrown at you. You whip it twice the size right back at them. So you just own Twitter and people don't understand why. Well, guess what? He's got the stuff. That's why. I'm Buff and I'm the stuff. And Hell yeah, man. The thing they're trying to go with now is the, the verification so Why don't you have it? Is the yeah? I okay. have everything. I have every res- piece of the resume, and I've even talked to Butterbean, which has a verification in Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. And I'm like, bro, what is the deal? Why? Why can't I get it? He goes, bro, I know people. He goes, they're just not giving it out right now. They're not giving that the check mark. Out. Yeah, I, I work in a news industry, and there's some yeah. people here who are on TV, you know, every single day delivering the news to individuals. And guess what? They can't get it either. Uh, one no, final I, question, I, I, though. Um, what are your goals for this year? Because you just mentioned DDP. I know you have a lot of things going on. So yeah, I do. What are your goals for this year? Help. Um, I, as you can see, I'm in, I'm in shape. I feel good. I'm doing the DDPY and all that. But the main thing is to get my knee 100%. It's about 70. And it's just not where I really need it to be to, to go. Mm-hmm. Like Buff like Buff Bagel goes in the ring. And I mean, my goal would be, you know, of course, my, I mean, my goal is to be a pro wrestler. You know, that's a big goal. Well, my goal is to be back in the ring again. I, I'm 52. I'm only 52, bro. That's nothing in the world of pro wrestling. And, and I'm, you know, I, 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 I got another run left in me. I feel hundred percent. I do. If, if somebody, and I, I don't say anybody could even argue that fact. Of, of not me not having another run left in me and of any way you wanted to use me via headset and commentating or managing somebody and passing the top hat off to them or God, you can make up so many different storylines with above Bagel character that it just blows my mind why you wouldn't. I mean, I was at uh, uh, Matt um, uh, Cardona's uh, podcast the other day mm-hmm. and, uh, and he... Uh, uh, all of a sudden, Dolph Ziggler walks up and he goes, hey, man. I go, hey, I said, man, God, I, said, I love you on TV. He goes, man, I, I love you, bro. I said, he goes, can I get a picture with you? I said, I was wanting to get a picture with you. <laughs> you know, so he actually came to that podcast just to see me come out. Wow. And so here's a kid that's, I can call him a kid because he's younger than me. Here's a guy that's super cool that I watch on TV that I see has made it through a lot of years and done great with his career that is there to see me come out on a, on a podcast. He's not even on, you know? So it was really cool to meet him and just see that the kind of new respect I've got from a lot of guys and, 
see that you know Buff Bagwell is still got a I think still got a still got a run left in him. I really do. Well, Buff so that's Bagwell, not, that would be not be my ultimate goal. I believe you do have a second run in you, but I thank you so much for being here on NBC's Ten Count. It was a pleasure. Absolutely. I would I would tip my hat to you, but I am not wearing one. Ah, thank you, sir. Well, folks, I'm Steve Fall. He's Buff Bagwell. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.